I do think that this opens up another kind of a segue. I'll, maybe I'll just take it here about some other things that came with this release, including a new alert about uh, increased attention required. That's a new alert we got here. Uh, and the first time I saw it on my very first drive was approaching railroad tracks. I'm like, whoa increase attention required. This isn't pay attention to the road. It's an alert saying you need to pay attention more, which is the segue to SAE level three, which means you have to be in the driver's seat, but you need to be available to take over or assist if the car says it needs more attention. So in my opinion, we are a flip of a switch from SAE level three if this alert is the path to it getting good at knowing when it needs help. Um, so I, you know, as we go down this path that JD was alert, alluding to with no, no input. We're going towards autonomy. The path to autonomy, at least for car owners, not robo-taxi businesses that are owned by Tesla, is through SAE level three. We're not going to go from two to four, in my opinion, without going through some sort of three where we're going to let you look at your phone and watch Netflix in the front seat. Um, and, and give the car that responsibility, but use this new alert about, I need you to help me here, uh, and get really good at when it, it gives you that alert. I don't know if you guys saw that alert, if you are in the same mindset that yeah. we're going through SAE level three or not. I, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, I think that that was my takeaway from seeing that I'm like, why? So the logical thing here is like, if you're asking the driver to, Hey, I need your help here to pay more attention by default, when that is not there, you don't need me as much. And so by default, that means that over time, I'm not going to be needed in a lot of situations. So I think I think my over you said a flip of the switch, like how how far just based on your gut feel and what you've experienced so far. And we know there has to be like uh, things uh, solved around the edges here with smoothness. How far away are we really from? I think we're on the version 14 for sure uh, for SAE level you think three. This I don't gets, see I don't yeah. see any issue because it, listen, what if, what if my scenario about I don't have enough cameras if we want to go down there, but I don't have a facial camera, so I can't go there. If it says increase attention required, they've solved it for SA level three. If it gets up to an unprotected left turn or the traffic's too fast or it can't see, all they got to do is tell me. It solved that problem. But to go from there to four, we get into transfer of liability. We get into a lot of regulatory. Can you do this in the state and all that sort of stuff? So three is easy with what I think we just got with uh, version 14, having the start and end of the drives and the ability of telling a driver in the seat, I need you to help. And just, I, I want to make sure I define this very, very uh, clearly, especially for the for the people that are not familiar with the terminology. So, and, and I know you, you mentioned this, SAE level three, what we're basically saying here is that there are times where you will not be needed to pay attention to operate the vehicle, but you still need to be in the driver's seat, ready to take over at a moment's notice when the car needs your help. Right. So that's, yes. that's what and we the call car tells you when you need help. It's not like you yeah. need to be a pay attention to save the day. Theoretically, I say level three is when the something. car, the car asks for it. You need to be there and ready. Yeah. So so does that mean that what you so when when you make that statement, it implies that what you've seen so far says that there are moments or parts of your drives. I'm guessing majority of parts of your drives where you feel comfortable with the car having a safety level just as good, if not more than you, to trust the vehicle. Is that a fair representation of what I just said? For me, yes, and especially yeah. on highways uh, today. Uh, let's take out the braking and the harsh stuff, but let's say they've already demonstrated on 13.29 the ability of safely operating for thousands of miles. Uh, for me, at least just recently on a road trip up to Massachusetts and back, it, it, it gives that level of confidence. Uh, and it also, you can feel the, the, the braking, the tap, 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 tap. To me, it's thinking, this is tough. That might be exactly where these increased attention required alerts go. You know, Something's happening here. I need you to help. Um, I, I don't think we have enough of these incre increased attention, so I don't think they've built this out yet, and I'm not saying it's ready right now. But once they get that function finished, maybe it's 14.3 or maybe 14.4 or, or beyond, I feel like they've got everything they need to go to a regulator and say we're ready to go to level three. That's yeah, very I, interesting. Go ahead, Chris. Please. Okay. No, sorry. Um, I, I just want to say I think Chuck totally nailed it. I 100% agree with what you're saying and that it's the beginnings of that thought process. It makes perfect sense, and we know the cars are there. And and I want to add to that. I want to add two things. Number one, where I'm seeing these, uh, you know, like increased attention things for me, they've been kind of random, to be honest. I I've gone over train tracks; and it hasn't shown it. it I, I notice it popping up a lot when I'm like coming up to a red light. Like I don't know why, and then it just goes away after a second. Um, I haven't found any consistency in why it's telling me to do that. I've gone through construction zones, and it hasn't popped up. Um, so I just want to throw that out there so everybody knows. The other th uh, two other things I wanted to say, which are kind of related is is it's funny because number one you're saying that your uh 
you know, it's kind of opposite for me and you, the experience with that. You're saying your parking is kind of, eh, mine has been like perfect. There's been a, like a couple where I'm like, why would you choose that? But other than that, I mean, it parks everywhere I go. Um, and then the last part that I wanted to throw in here uh, has totally left my brain. So I'm just going to shut up. It's the beard. Uh, JD and then Sawyer. JD, do you agree with the statement here from Chris and Chuck that this current version at some point, V14, will get us to unsupervised self-driving, SAE level three in situations. Do you see that from your standpoint? Yeah, I would say 100%. I think um, version 14 is proof of that it's definitely possible. Um, definitely agree with everything Chuck said. Um, it's a... Uh, it's a tough problem. It's uh, I, I I have I've been trying to figure out why it tells me to pay attention sometimes and others not. I've had the same same experience as Chris, where sometimes it pops up coming up to a construction zone and sometimes it doesn't. I've noticed that typically when the speed is higher, um, like 30, 35 or more, um, it's more likely to show for things like railroad crossings and construction zones. And then when it's going when it's already going slow, um, it doesn't pop up as much. Like I think through all of my drives through Berkeley and the narrow hills where I go to stress test it, I don't think it popped up a single time, which is kind of odd. You'd think that's a place where it would require a super, um, like a lot of attention, but I think it's just going slow enough where it, it feels pretty confident in, in what it's doing. Um, so I don't know if there, I haven't, you know, don't have enough experience to see if there's a rhyme or reason there yet, but totally see the path uh, to being able to chill out a lot more on the highway. And I think, um, I think once that, once that, um, switch is flipped, that's going to make a lot more people pay attention to self-driving when they're on the freeway, you know, going home after a long day of work and they look over and they see somebody chilling. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't wait. No pun intended, right? Pay more attention to unsupervised, get it? Sawyer, uh, same question to you. Uh, do you agree that V14 will get the Tesla vehicles to SAE level three unsupervised? Yeah, yeah. I didn't feel that way so much with V13, but I think that's fair to say with V14. I did see that uh, notification pop up that Chuck saw with increased attention. I was pulling off a highway into a yield area, and there was uh, oncoming traffic from the left. It said increase attention required, uh, and then it went away once it proceeded. Uh, but yeah, it FSD version version 14 feels like a step change. It just needs to polish out some of the brake stabbing and a few other things, but it definitely feels like a much, much better overall in terms of capability. Than previous versions. Go ahead, Chris. Um, yeah, I, if you want to expand on that, go ahead. But I, I remembered what left my brain. It came back. Um, it was about the brake stamping. I think we should probably touch on that for a minute because we did. I think we all mentioned in the beginning, but I think it's a big thing people are really curious about. And there's a couple of things I want to say. For me, I don't know about you guys, it's always happening at really low speeds. I would say like below 20 miles an hour is really the only time I'm experiencing it. So I've seen a lot of people like, oh my gosh, this is a huge safety concern. Someone's going to rear end you. Like if someone is tailgating me, you know, and they're looking at their phone and it happens, I'm sure it's possible, but it's been really low speeds. It's not something, and the car's not stopping. It's just like on off on off. Like in one of the examples I showed in a video, you can't even see the speed changing. It's, it's happening so fast. Um, it doesn't it, come across very well on video. It's true. Yeah. You, you can't see it very well. Like someone, sometimes you can see my camera sway a little bit or something. Um, but it, it, it is a very harsh feeling. Like when you're sitting there, it's a very like, Oh, like feeling, but you can't see it that well. The speed doesn't really change. So I don't want people to think this is like the car is going from 50 miles per hour to zero. You know, th that's not what's happening for me. I'm, I'm going to say on top of that, uh, I've always been a little skeptical of this, but I'm, I'm starting to believe everybody that when Tesla does these newer rollouts, they kind of dial up the, the caution of the vehicles. Um, I always thought that was kind of like, eh, I, don't, I don't know, it seems silly. But but every time we get these big updates, it happened with 13, I remember, it's happening now, it, around pedestrians for me, the car just does not want to go anywhere near pedestrians, which is, that's fair, that's fine. I, I have no problem with that. It's just, that's where I'm noticing a lot of these things happening. And so, you know, when people are like, oh, they're stopping the rollout, it, blah, blah, blah. This is something I could see like 14.1.1 and it's gone. You know what I mean? I, we've seen these things before with, with new big releases. Um, so I don't think it's an end of the world thing. It, it's not something that is going to be causing accidents all over the place. Um, but it is something that currently, you know, does happen. For me, it's always been so far below about 20 miles an hour. Fascinating. Um, JD, did you want to jump in? Yeah, I think another... Um big reason we're seeing these little micro breaks um, is, I don't know if you all feel the same way, but I feel like the reaction time of version 14 is insane. Absolutely. Like the, like, I, I feel like it's not just the second things happen. It's, it's like the millisecond things are happening. It's reacting. I posted that video 
driving through Berkeley where it was going around a corner and there was somebody backing out of their driveway. And you can see he was backing out. The car was slowing. It was showing on the path planner that it was slowing. The car stopped and then the path planner went forward. And then the second he continued backing up, the car braked hard because he was continuing to back up. And it's like, the more I watch that video, like frame by frame, it is wild how quickly the the car is reacting to that stuff. Um, and I think that's a major, one of the major reasons we're seeing these little micro brakes is because the car is considering so many things so quickly. Um, like where version 13 felt smoothed out, like it would kind of wait for the situation to develop a little bit more before getting into the brakes. Version 14 is like, I'm braking now. Even on the highway, when there's traffic slowing in front of me or something, or, you know, there's somebody doing something weird, like it's reacting to it immediately with no hesitation, um, which can sometimes feel a, a lot less smooth sometimes than version 13. But you can seriously feel it reacting insanely quick i don't know if i'm the only one who feels that way but like the reaction times have been wild for me yeah i saw i saw nods from everybody when you, you were saying that Go ahead, um, Chris. It, it, yeah it's i mean it's reaction time and perception are both in sync so fast it's unbelievable i i touched on it in the beginning but i think this is another really good topic we should we should talk about um for a minute because it was always this thing where you see stuff and you're like, are you gonna, oh, okay, you did it, you know? And it's this thing where like you start thinking about it and then FSD does it, right? Now it's turned into FSDs reacting as that thought is entering your brain or even before. And so I commented on a, the car made a right turn and somebody starts opening their car door and it's like right as that car door starts opening, it was kind of a harsh break, a little harsher than it really needed to. Um, but there was another car coming from the opposite. So we couldn't go around the door opening. We did have to stop, but it's just, Oh, the reaction is crazy. And so it can feel a little abrupt because it's kind of getting to the point where this thing can make decisions faster than you. Or even if it is the same time that you're thinking about whatever decision is happening, the car is already acting on it as well. And so part of, and I've talked about this throughout the years of using this software, part of the comfort level of this, of using this stuff is that how much you can anticipate or expect what's going to happen. And so if you're driving, you anticipate and expect everything that's going to happen because you're the one controlling the, the braking and the going and all of that. When the computer starts making these decisions so quickly that as, as JD just said, you don't know that it's breaking for something in the environment happening until it's already happening or a, you know, a half a second or a second later. So you interpret that as, whoa, that was abrupt. And, and maybe it was, but it's just, it's all happening so fast. It, it, you can't think at the speed of a computer. And that's kind of what I've been waiting for out of FSD basically this whole time. I, I've always said like, it's a computer. Why am I seeing and reacting to these things, you know, even half a second before it? And and we're kind of past that now. Uh, like I said, I personally, I feel like I need more miles to really like be able to say like, yes, it thinks faster than I do. But if it doesn't, it is just as fast as I'm thinking. It, it's really crazy. It, it's one of the best parts of this update for me, for sure. That's that's really good to hear because one of, one of the theses I've had from the very beginning since FSD started coming out and it started going through updates. One of one of the things we would constantly hear uh, was you know it needs additional sensors. It needs it needs lidar, radar, etc. We I know Chuck, you've said you know the the bumper camera definitely takes you much closer to where you want to go uh, from from like a actual let's say the gaps that needed to be filled. But but it was way past that. People were saying no 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 you need a lot more you need a lot more. And the experience I've always had with FSD is it's not it's not that it doesn't see it. It's that it doesn't sometimes doesn't make the right decision on what it sees. It's less about what it sees and more about the decision. And here, and, and so like lis listening to that, what it tells me is that the the that was that has been let's let's just say 100% solved. But it's obvious that that's that was the that was the gap that needed to be closed was the reaction on what it saw versus if it's able to see it or not. And even those videos that you, you showed, I think it was, was it you, Chris? It was the ambulance that was coming down. I think it was that one. It's like, oh, man. yeah, it's like, it's like, I don't even see it. And the car's already pulling over, you know? It's like, okay, so it sees it better than I can. What else do I need to say? There's enough photons coming into the camera that are shaped like an ambulance that it's like, oh, ambulance, I gotta, you know, with the lights on, oh, I gotta move over, right? And it's like, if you really think about it logically, it's like, of course that would happen, obviously. Because the computer, that's what it's supposed to do. That's its job. Its job is to look and then make a decision on what it looks. Us, we're like freaking daydreaming about burgers and there's a phone ringing and, you know, you might have a kid crying in the back and some guy flipping you off, you know, on the left. It's like there's all these things going on. The computer's just focused on driving, you know. Um, Chuck, go for it. 
Yeah, I and I had one of those ambulance experience also, and it was definitely pulling over before I saw it. Also, uh, it, the reaction time to reiterate is wicked fast. Um, in some situations, may could you say maybe too fast, and, and or is is this where you need to round off that deceleration curve so we don't feel it as much? You need to think about it. Um, many of you have heard or understand what the trolley problem is, and it's one of those AI things that you think through about what does a car do if it's got two bad scenarios and no good scenario out of it. You know, you do feel like it's going through the trolley problem in each of these scenarios that uh, we're noticing this braking. I also will, now that Chris mentioned it, think it is mostly low speed. I, I do feel like it's looking for people running a red light. Sometimes when it's turning right on red, it's kind of like, uh, 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 it's like it's worried about things that could happen rather than what it actually sees. Um, in, in where 13.29 in the whole version 13, I even used some quotes, you know, that even the F-ups are smooth. Well, maybe the F-ups were smooth in version 13 just because it went right through them and never saw them, right? You know, it just, it just kind of eased through it. Uh, you know, pedestrians are, to use Chris's word, it's kryptonite, it's giving them a bubble that could get shrunk, but I don't know that we want to shrink it as much as not overreact to it, um, right? You know, there's something we use in aviation where, where, where new pilots over control the aircraft, you know, you're like, hey, you're taking everything in, but you're reacting to everything. And actually you need to cut the edges off of your reactions and put it right in the middle and you're going to be fine. It feels like we're kind of in that overreaction scenario. And they got to just dial it in, which is totally software, it's totally a curve, and it's totally something that they probably already have a switch on in their cars. And to uh, Chris's point, you know, they, they're going to dial it down on 1411 or something like that if they needed to. But it's so comforting to know that they can actually see at that speed and resolution. It does bring up hardware three questions that a lot of people want to hear that are probably watching this live. And, you know, is this latency truly a hardware four solution? Is the camera resolution truly at five megapixels what we needed to get this? And does a 10 megapixel camera with an AI5 and AI6, you know, take it to the next level of, of superhuman, right? We're still just trying to say better than a human, but we want to go superhuman. I don't think we need LiDAR. I don't think we need radar. If anything, what we're feeling with these instant reactions is validation of the occupancy network work and the detail of the voxels have as a solution when you can see everything. Obviously, Sandy Monroe has said, you know, forward looking infrared and other sensors like that could make you like Terminator and you can see through fog and things like that that you can't with cameras. Um, but and it, it's exciting to watch happen. And I, I think we're on, on the right path and the team has definitely got this. Yeah, that's I mean, that's that's been the the big the big thing. It's like the, the hardware three piece. I think if Tesla gets to, to unsupervised with F, F, V14, I think I think we all have to put a lot of pressure on Tesla to give us a specific visibility. Like we should be able to put pressure now, honestly. Hardware three. I have an FSD hardware three model Y in my driveway. I want this so bad. And I know Tesla wants it too, because that thing within the scope of what they're trying to achieve, it could be a robo taxi down the road making money for the company. So just just tell me, tell me, like what's the expectation? Like, should I should I should I trade it in and get a hardware four? Should I should I wait to get it upgraded? You know, I think I think that's going to be a, a big thing that Tesla's going to have to navigate through here in the next in the next three to six months as I, as this thing goes unsupervised.